Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about the lathe modifier. Uh, this is another modifier that we can apply to uh, edit spline objects and we, uh, we can create circular shapes or uh, 360 symmetrical shapes. It doesn't need to be symmetrical be of course because we can edit it later on but uh, as a base uh, at least we can create uh, 360 rotated or lathe objects. A good example could be a vase uh, like this, for example, like this. There are a lot of different types of things we can create with this. Or other some good examples could be uh, these or maybe even a soda can, a bottle, uh, a cup or whatever. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with uh, how to use this tool and then uh, I'm going to show you how to create some of these objects uh, as well. First let's create a line. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, hit F to go to the front view. Then I'm going to choose uh, the line command and then I'm going to just create a random shape for now. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to lathe this or rotate this around this axis in here. Okay. To do that I'm going to go to the modify tab. I'm going to add the lathe modifier to this. And then I can just select the axis and move it around and you will see what happens uh, is this section in here rotates or revolves around this axis in here. Let me show this to you in the perspective window and you can see that let's uh, disable and enable this. As you can see this uh, section in here rotates around this axis in here. Okay. Uh, there's a better way I can show this to you. I can just zero this angle value and uh, increase it gradually and you can see that what lathe does uh, in an animated uh, fashion. Okay, so if you change this cross section, let's go back to the line. Let's hit the show end result button and hit one to go to the vertex mode. Uh, you, if you change the Cross section, as you can see, the lathe also changed. This is very useful um, to be able to see this, see the end result, because at first, at least, it's a little difficult to imagine the end result uh, while drawing the cross section. But as you can see, you can edit later on. You can even add points with refine and move them around as well. You can also delete these as well. Okay, it's just like we are in the line tool, but we see the end result. Okay, so let's try to change the axis. Uh, if you uh, move the axis closer to the cross section, you can see that it gets a little bit narrower. And if you move it uh, away from it, the uh, radius of this circle in here uh, it grows a lot larger. Okay. So there are uh, a couple of um, extra properties in here uh, that can help us. Uh, the uh, one that I use most I guess is the weld core option. Uh, it won't have an effect right now but uh, let me show what it does to you. Uh, when you make the axis closer to the one of the endpoints or the start point, uh, lathe will automatically weld this as you can see. If you click on this and uh, you get close enough, as you can see the uh, lathe will weld those points and if you add an edit poly modifier on top for example and go to the vertex to, uh, mode you can see that there is only one vertex in here. All is welded together. Okay, but for now, uh, this is a little bit ahead of us. Uh, flip normals will uh, change the inner side of the object. If you are trying to create a, a an object larger, for example, like this, and you want to render the inner sides of this, you can just change the normals with this. Okay, but also a good way to do this is to add a shell modifier, for example, this way both sides will be visible. So you don't have to worry about this that much. The segments will increase or decrease the segments uh, while uh, created while you are rotating around this uh, axis in here. So you can play with these segments as well. Let's keep this at, at 16. Uh, you can cap or uncap the start and the end points. Uh, that's for closed uh, lights, of course. Let's try to create one. I'm going to go back to my line and I'm going to connect these two vertices. This way I will have a closed shape. And if I decrease this, you, this, you can see that the ends in here are kept. If you uncheck these, they will be open. 
Okay, that's this. Uh, this controls these uh, end faces. Okay, the direction is the direction for the axis. If you hit X, it will be in the X axis. Uh, let me pull this up so you can see that it's aligned to the X axis, as you can see. If you choose Y, it will be aligned to the Y axis. And if you hit Z, it will be aligned to the Z axis. Sometimes it. Uh, it, it's a little bit confusing which axis represents which one. Uh, just try it out. I, I don't usually go with my instincts. I just try them out in here and see the end result if it's close to what I want or not. Okay. So align is a cool option. It, it will align the axis to the cross section. If you go uh, hit minimum, it will go to the minimum point of the, as you can see, this point in here is the minimum in the X axis. If you hit center, it will go to the center of the cross section. If you hit max, max, it will go to the max point of the cross section in the x-axis, as you can see. Okay, these are the extra properties we can use. So let's try to create some meaningful shapes. Let's go uh, for a vase, for example. If I create, uh, select the line tool. Actually, let's draw a rectangle for the uh, general dimensions. Uh, try to get used to this. It's a, a lot. Uh, it's very useful to know the general dimensions we are working with. Right now, for example, it's two meters and I don't want this big a vase, so I need to uh, make this a little smaller. Uh, let's go with 40 centimeters for the height and uh, 15 centimeters for the width, okay? Uh, don't forget that this will be the uh, only half of the vase. It will rotate around this axis in here. If I hit S, I can right click on the snap tool and choose grid points as well and I can just move this to the origin as you can see this will just sit on the uh, on this axis in here this it it will make uh, things a little bit easier uh, I guess and I'm going to choose the line tool hit S again to start from the origin uh, hit S again uh, to disable it now I can just go freestyle uh, not snapping to the grid points or vertices I'll hold shift to draw a straight line first then I'm going to go ahead and create this shape okay at this point it doesn't really matter what this shape uh, looks like for you uh, but try to match this I guess it will be uh, at, at least the final result will be more similar to mine uh, let's hit one to go to the vertex tool choose all of the vertices I I'm going to hold alt and deselect these uh, that's it and I'm going to right click and choose the smooth option so that these uh, vertices will be smooth. Okay. Let's play along with these. Or uh, let's play with these uh, vertices to make this a little bit smooth. Okay. It looks good. Now I'm going to add the lathe modifier on top. I'm going to hit one to choose the axis and I, j I can just move it to the origin. Uh, you can also, by the way, uh, zero this value because it should be z uh, at at zero centimeters in the x-axis okay and let's just complete this uh, rotation it's it should be 360 it looks a little bit thick to me so I'm going to go to the line and I'm going to just play with this if I click on show end result then I can see the end result while I'm working okay let me make it a little bit thinner in my opinion, it will look more elegant this way. Okay. And also th this in here looks a little bit uh, cornered. I want this to be more smooth, more round. So let's try to achieve that. Okay. If this uh, still looks a little bit cornered, and it does to me, I'm going to right click, go to Bezier, and I can just play with the uh, tangent handle of this vertex and it will look much better this way as you can see okay so this is one object we can create with lathe of course this has no thickness in here so what you can do is you can add a shell modifier on top of this and let's add a chamfer modifier as well so that the corners should look a little bit rounded more rounded like this I don't want this look in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and increase this minimum angle. Uh, if you go with 45, for example, it will only affect the corners as you can see. Okay, it will look 
smoother, much better. And in chamfer, I decrease the amount to one point, uh, 0 0.15. And also these uh, segments in here look a little bit ugly. So let's go to lathe and increase these segments in here. Okay. If I increase this to 32, you will end up with this. Let's even increase it a little bit more. If you are going to get a close up shot, uh, you can need more, you may need more. So you can increase it from there. Let's get rid of this rectangle in here. And this is our first object. Okay. Let's try uh, one more thing, uh, one more object. Let's try something like a cup, for example. And I want to add a little bit more detail like this. So I want to show that to you. Let's delete this. Hit F to go to the front view again. Again, I'm going to start with a rectangle. Let's start with uh, 20 centimeters of height and 10 centimeters of width. I'm going to move this to the origin, start with the line again, start from the origin. And then I'm going to just create the base first. I'm going to hold shift. Actually, let me bring this a little more closer. Uh, I, I guess I told this to you, but this is pure ref. Uh, I really like to use this because uh, there's one very good thing you can do. You can hold, uh, click on Control Shift A, and it will be always on top. You can still work on Max, and this will stay here. So uh, this is very good for your reference images, in my opinion. Okay, so let's start with the bottom in here. I'm going to start from here, go to here, and go inwards a little bit. I'm trying to match this shape in here. Uh, it has a little bit steps. I guess it doesn't get this thin, but uh, please remember that we can also edit this later on. So I'm just trying to roughly create the same shape. Uh, you will get better at this uh, the longer you try, I promise. It's a little bit tedious at first to work these out, but w when you get be better, it is actually a little bit. Uh, it's, it is actually fun to create things. Just eyeball them and see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm not really sure if this will work out or not, but yeah, it's pretty similar, I guess. Yeah, we can of course edit some values, but uh, it's better th than I thought. So let's go back to line. Uh, click on the show end result button. Hit one to go to the vertex uh, tool. A sub object mode and just try to match this a little bit more to our reference. Okay, these should be smooth uh, because we have uh, the the surface direction is like this in here, as you can see. But these should be corners because we have a little bit of corners. Uh, I'm going to, of course, add a chamfer modifier at uh, at last minute, so remember that. So uh, I'm not going to create the smallest fillets like this. Okay. So I'm going to just smooth this one as well. Let's uh, create these with fillets. Fillet. Let's just smooth this out. This wouldn't, of course, look like this with a fillet, so I model this. So it's wide, I guess. Let's a little bit thinner these parts as well okay so of course you can also put this image uh, to the background of 3ds max uh, i'm going to show that to you as well but for now let's just leave it like this and then i'm going to add shell again and i'm going to add a chamfer modifier on top let's decrease the amount value and you can see that we have something similar to that cup over there okay Let's change the color. <laughs> this is a little bit of a weird color, I guess. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, of course, we don't want this uh, in here, right? So shell uh, may not work for this at this point. Let me show you a different method to create the inner parts uh, of the cup. I'm going to just disable the shell or just even right-click delete it. Go back to lathe. Uh, sorry, line and disable the um, show and result button. Now, what we need to do here is to create the shell in the uh, line uh, or edit spline uh, step. To do that, we use outline, as you know, 
and I'm going to just create an outline like this, 0.6 centimeters. But what I want to do is I want to get rid of these parts, okay? Because we don't want this. If you put, pour some water or whatever in this, uh, it will go all the way down. So we want a cup or inner part should end in here, right? Because we want to fill this portion only, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this vertex and pull it. Uh, actually, let's not play with this. Let's create a new line for this. I'm going to hide the chamfer and the lathe for now and go to line, hit S and try to create something like this. I want to pull this vertex position to the zero in the x-axis and I want to attach this to our line. Then I want to just weld these two vertices together. Okay. Okay, now because the length will be from this axis or uh, the object will rotate around this axis, uh, this face should be closed uh, in the end when we add the lathe modifier. So let's see this. I'm going to enable it, go to the lathe, and let's look at in the inner parts here. As you can see, we have this line showing up, okay? Let me show this to you in a um, animated fashion again. I'm going to go to zero, and if I increase this, you can see that because our section ends in here, the surface uh, that's created with lathe uh, also starts or uses that line uh, in the end result. So let's go with 360. And also you, if you want to smooth here, you can go back to line, select this, and add a fillet in here, right? And you can see that it's smoothed out, okay, in here as well. Okay. Cool, so these uh, are the type of objects you can create uh, with lathe and there are a lot of different things you can, because as you can see you can edit this later on. What we can do is we can, for example, add holes to this or add, even add, and add poly and just choose a face and just extrude this for example. Uh, I know that we don't know the edit poly yet, but you can do whatever you want with this. I'm just trying to show that to you, okay. Just try to think that this is only a base uh, for uh, what we are going to do. Uh, most of the time you usually finish with uh, edit poly because uh, you most of the time you want to add more details to the objects you model. So uh, try to think of these extrude bevel lathe uh, sweep bevel profile. We are going to see some more uh, modifiers after this. Uh, let's try to think of these uh, as a way to create base shapes that we can edit later on. Okay. Okay. I hope this was, this was useful uh, for you. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe bu button, and you can support us on Patreon, or you can go ahead and buy our render uh, tutorials on Udemy. Just search for CGK and you will uh, find them. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.